Hello, everyone. This is Alex Rubenstein reporting from Mint Press News. Um, I'm here at the Venezuelan Embassy in Washington, D.C., where a number of activists have uh, grouped together um, in, anticip in anticipation of a raid today by U.S. authorities in order to hand over the embassy to uh, the illegitimate government of Juan Guaido. Uh, shortly, there will be a representative of Juan Guaido uh, named Carlos Vecchio, who will be giving a speech outside, um, and it's expected that the raid could come shortly after that. Uh, I have for you here uh, a few interviews that we're going to do, and I'm gonna, just going to give you a little bit of an inside look at the embassy. This is Ariel Gold. She's the uh, national co-director. Uh, uh, is that right? Co-director for Code Pink. And Ariel, can you uh, just talk about why you're here today? Well, let's begin by mentioning that Vecchio is the fake ambassador. So he's the one that uh, Trump wants to have take over this embassy to be a fake embassy. But Vecchio has no ability to run consular services or any services out of this embassy because, as Guaido's representative, he has nothing. He's not an ambassador. It's a fake ambassador. Guaido has no legitimate power in Venezuela, no power at all in Venezuela. So it, it would be a, a useless building, I mean, of course, a stolen building, but a useless building, not serving any uh, Venezuelans who are in the U.S. because you can't. And, uh, you know, we're getting ready for this rally, which is really like a rally of hate. I used to spend a lot of time in the West Bank city of Hebron, full of the most uh, ideologically extreme and violent violent of the uh, Israeli settler movement and uh, the Vecchio support, the Guaido and Vecchio supporters that were here yesterday and that we're expecting back here imminently, um, they remind me so much of those vile, violent, hateful Israeli settlers. And it's an incitement to violence. Vecchio holding a, 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 a rally here in front of this embassy is an incitement to violence, and nobody in America should be tolerating that. We call on, we demand that the Trump administration end this coup on Venezuela. Great. Thank you so much, Ariel. So I'm just going to give you guys a little tour of uh, what's going on here. People are just kind of getting prepared. Uh, I mean, uh, having some conversations and uh, doing everything they can to uh, get ready for this raid that's expected. Um, do you want to talk? Um, give it a minute. All right. Um, so I'm going to just take you around the embassy a little bit uh, and, and show you around and see who we can talk to. Aminta, are, are you available? Sure, yeah. All right. So this is Aminta. Um, she is a uh, Nicaraguan uh, 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 American, and she is a member, a longstanding member of the uh, Embassy Protection Collective. Aminta, can you tell me why you stand against the coup in Venezuela? I'm we understand, for instance, using Nicaragua as an example, that the U.S. has attempted to invade Nicaragua over 70 states, disrespects the sovereignty of Nicaragua. It does the same for other countries in Latin America and throughout the global south as a whole. So I'm here today standing as somebody who is able to be here in Washington, D.C. Uh, to oppose U.S. intervention, uh, because all we know that comes out of it is, is violence and death. Now, I talked to you a little bit about this last night, and I actually just published an article on Mint Press News that every can check out. Um, it's about uh, the bigotry of the Venezuelan opposition that we saw here at this embassy yesterday. Uh, not only did they attack people, uh, they were violent, but they hurled every kind of racial slur you can imagine. So can you just talk about what you experienced personally? Definitely. I mean, these people are absolutely ruthless. They are extremely racist and sexist. Not only was I catcalled, but I was, uh, people called me India, which is a very uh, anti-indigenous slur. I had one uh, pro Guaido protester who even said, you're so ugly, I see the indigenous all over your face, it's in your nose, it's in your eyes, it's everywhere. So clearly we see that these pro Guaido supporters uh, clearly support a white supremacist agenda, they support a racist agenda, and I think that shows a lot because we see that a lot of the Venezuelans, in particular a lot of the Afro-Venezuelans and indigenous Venezuelans, show a lot of their support for Maduro. Um, and that stark contrast definitely needs to be recognized. Thank you so much, Aminta. Thank you. So I'm just going to see if I can get an interview here for you guys uh, with somebody who is planning on getting arrested. Uh, does anybody who is planning on getting arrested want to talk on the live stream? I just saw Pocky. Risking arrest, thank you, thank you.
<laughs> Let's see if we can find some more interviews. <laughs> Pocky, do you want to talk? Hello, Alex. <laughs> uh, so, um, are, you are uh, risking arrest here today, right? I, I will risk arrest. Okay, and so can you just talk about your motivation for that? Well, I think we need to take the strongest stand as we can. And uh, I know a lot of people have so many other commitments they can't do it. But I am happily retired and, uh, and available to do this. I don't have other commitments that can't be done by somebody else. So I think the reason I need to do this is because we need to make a statement as strong as possible. And the more people who are risking arrest, we'll put our bodies in the way. Uh, what we're saying is this is very important because in the end, that's all we really have. You know, uh, it's not a vote, it's not a, a protest, but it's it's putting our bodies. And, and to be able to take this to court, to say this is why we did this, and, and this, it's, it's really about the rule of law, and this whole world has become so lawless right. that, um, that we have to take a stand wherever we can. And I'm happy enough and fortunate enough to be in Washington, D.C. at this very moment where I have the opportunity to do it. Thank you so much. And could I ask you, I mean, you've been an activist for a while, um, and, and I'm sure you've, you've uh, you know, observed many a coup. What, what do you think will be the result of, uh, of, of the United States' action in, in Venezuela? Well, I, I tell you, I think our being here is a testimony to the maturity of the anti-war, anti-imperialist movement. Um, I remember when the coup in, in, uh, in the, the coup in Honduras happened, and I remember talking about it with people, but we were sort of wrenching, you know, wrenching our hands and saying, oh, ain't it a shame, uh, you know, but here we have people who are actively involved in speaking out to it and stopping it. I mean, yesterday, it's the Venezuelan people. You know, I used to think, because you said I was a, a long-time activist, well, I was very much involved in anti-war activities during Vietnam. And I remember once saying, uh, so we stopped the war, and I was reminded that now it's really the Vietnamese people who stopped the war. But we did, we played our part, and I feel the same thing is happening here. It is the Venezuelan people and all the people who believe in the principles of the Bolivarian and revolution. And I'm one of those people. And so I'm, so I'm so happy to be able to lend my weight to that. Thank you so much, Paki. Wasn't Paki eloquent? I'm going to have to interview her some, uh, some more in the future. So as, as you can see here, uh, there's kind of things being loaded down uh, in anticipation of this raid. We don't know if it's going to happen, but uh, by every... Uh, I mean, there's good reason to believe that this is going to happen. So um, people are just getting prepared. You can see that some people have been staying here for like over two weeks, and you know these are the things that they've been using to sleep on. Uh, it's it's been a little bit of people roughing it, but uh, there's been a number of food donations too, and uh, everyone's been cooking um, and helping out, cleaning up. Uh, the embassy's been ve kept very clean. Actually, last night. Uh, we had a, uh, actually this morning, I, I apologize, we had a uh, opposition supporter break into the building unlawfully, and uh, eventually he was, he was removed, but um, what we found, and what I found after re-entering the room that he had barricaded himself in, was that the place was trashed. It had to have been hundreds of dollars of property d destruction. Um, there were very fancy desks that were totally destroyed. Uh, one of these, um, one of these, uh, I'll show you here. One of these uh, light fixtures, it was torn down. Um, the, the, um, the curtains were all messed up, and there were just marks all over the floor um, that uh, obviously it's going to cost a lot of money to repair. Um, I'm just going to keep. Uh, oh, and you know, I wanted to mention, as Packy said earlier, uh, you know, there there's an international law that is on our side, according to these activists, and and that law is Article 22 of the Vienna Convention. Uh, this article uh, stipulates that um, this embassy is the sovereign territory of the Venezuelan government, and uh, that it's the U.S. Secret Service's job to protect this embassy. Um, but they don't have jurisdiction in here. 
um, unless they are given permission from that government. The problem is, and as we explained earlier a little bit, Carlos Vecchio, uh, the uh, uh, ambassador to Juan Guaido, um, is going to be here uh, holding a rally outside, and so um, basically the anticipation is is that uh, Vecchio will uh, tell the Secret Service that uh, the people that are in here are in here unlawfully, and because Washington recognizes this illegitimate government as legitimate, uh, they'll have uh, they'll have cause to evict us. Um, under the uh, the Vienna Convention, so I'm just going to keep uh, walking around a little bit and showing you guys what's going on, and we'll do some more interviews if we can. Uh, everyone's really busy right now, so I apologize for that. But uh, I mean, it, this is like uh, the the last moments potentially of uh, of um, this uh, week long tendency uh, that uh, the uh, embassy protectors have been engaging in. Um, so I'm, I'll, I'll show you around the office, and I'll, I'll see if I can catch anyone. Uh, there, there's many offices in here, but I'll see if I can catch anyone that uh, we can interview. And that's uh, that's a president. Uh, that's a picture of the uh, former president Hugo Chavez. Uh, that's uh, Simon Bolivar, uh, popularly known as the liberator of uh, of Latin America. As you can see here, uh, there's like some opposition members outside the window. Um, it, it looks like. Uh, it looks like they're trying to uh, block off the entrance, um, and there's a, yeah, it looks like they're trying to block off the entrance, um, so this, this woman here, this elderly woman is having to crawl over the barricades to get inside. Um, it's kind of indicative of how, how nasty the opposition has been in the past couple days uh, we had people try to barricade us inside as I mentioned earlier uh, one one opposition activist uh, broke inside the embassy uh, last night and uh, dis uh, destroyed a room um, I'm just gonna give you guys uh, an eye on this So I don't know if you guys can hear the officers or what's going down, going on downstairs, but uh, basically um, these uh, opposition activists are blocking entry from embassy protectors who are actually here at the invitation of the legitimate government of Venezuela. Uh, the Secret Service officer uh, told them that they were trespassing, but clearly they're not doing anything to um, stop that trespassing. Uh, if you if you see the gentleman there in the striped uh, shirt, he's uh, one of the uh, main organizers of uh, of the uh, opposition protests. He's been hurling race, racist slurs at people, uh, calling people ugly, uh, and uh, using sexist slurs. Um, I have it all in the Mint Press article that we just published um, about the bigotry of the opposition that we saw yesterday. Um, as you can see, uh, there's like a lot of media gathering around here. Um, so I'm just going to keep on uh, giving you guys a look at this.
and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there's um, there's Anya Parampil uh, next to um, the man in the red and the woman in the pink up, up top. Uh, she's a she's a very esteemed reporter, and she's unable to leave the building at the moment because the opposition is blocking her. I'll get some more interviews for you guys in a bit and get some more information, but uh, for right now, I think we should just keep an eye on the standoff. It looks like the uh, officer in charge here is coming back, so he may have uh, some kind of uh, orders to to um, maybe take control of this situation, maybe not. And again, uh, I, I don't know if you heard, but the Secret Service told these opposition activists that they are trespassing, but they're not, they're not doing anything um, to uh, prevent them from trespassing. So uh, my suspicion, and this is just a personal suspicion, so uh, don't take this uh, too seriously, but my suspicion is that they have orders from the U.S. State Department not to arrest any opposition activists. And, and actually, they haven't uh, arrested any um, embassy protectors so far, but... Uh, but um, they have detained at least three. And you can see that the uh, Secret Service is talking to some of the Code Pink activists who are members of the Embassy Protection Collective. Um, and actually, uh, there's the uh, lead officer talking to the opposition activists. And again, that gentleman in the red shirt, the red striped sh uh, shirt uh, with the glasses, uh, he, he was the one who was on the megaphone all day yesterday uh, hurling uh, racial slurs at people, sexist slurs, homophobic slurs, um, calling them really every name in the book. So for those of you who aren't sure what's going on right now, uh, there is a standoff over the um, embassy, the Venezuelan embassy in Washington, D.C. Uh, the, um, the legitimate government of Venezuela invited this group of activists, which uh, banded together as the uh, Embassy Protection Collective, um, to uh, stay inside the embassy. So they are actually lawful tenants right now uh, in the embassy. Um, however, as you know, I'm sure uh, the U.S. government is backing a coup attempt in Venezuela and has recognized an illegitimate government as the rightful rulers of that country. And so um, there's some opposition activists outside right now that are trying to impede um, what's going on inside the embassy uh, by not letting people in. Uh, and uh, and again, there is expected. It is expected that there will be a raid today. Uh, Carlos uh, Vecchio, who is uh, the ambassador to the opposition, um, the kind of the um, the illegitimate uh, ambassador from Venezuela to the United States, is expected to speak here soon at a rally. And uh, the uh, fear is is that he will say that uh, that the embassy protectors are here unlawfully. And since Washington recognizes the um, the illegitimate government as the rightful government of Venezuela. Uh, it's expected that uh, U.S. authorities will raid this building, kick people out, arrest people. There's a number of people who um, are prepared to be arrested. Uh, and, oh, okay, so you can see that uh, after talking to 
Um, some of the opposition Secret Service was able to get them to stop blockading the door uh, and let everyone back inside who was trying to uh, get in. And also um, reporters, uh, this is Anya Parampil right here. She's an esteemed reporter, and she's been trying to get out. I believe. Oh, it looks like she's going back inside. No, 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 maybe, maybe not. She's uh, exiting the building, but she's been unable to for some time uh, because of uh, those um, act, uh, opposition activists uh, blocking uh, the, uh, and it looks like they're following her around. That actually wasn't too confrontational compared to what we saw yesterday. Um, we saw uh, a Venezuelan opposition activists uh, chasing around neutral legal observers uh, with the National Lawyers Guild, whose job it is basically to just film the police and make sure the police aren't breaking the law. But um, the opposition activists didn't really, uh, maybe they didn't know why were they, they were there. Maybe they saw them as just left wingers and therefore uh, against them. But uh, the, the NLG is a neutral group that. Um, that documents, uh, you know, police misconduct, and uh, the opposition was chasing them around yesterday. That's also in our new article on Mint Press News about uh, about the character, I would call it, of uh, the opposition that was outside the embassy today. Um, I'm back in the conference room, and maybe we can get some more interviews. So. Anything in this embassy, unless you have been given, if it's not yours, unless you have been given express permission by the embassy staff to take it, do not take it. There is artwork and other items in this building that are cataloged, and if you take them, then the opposition will know that they have been taken, and they will blame the Maduro government and call them thieves. So or blame us. Don't take pictures. Don't take anything unless you've been given. It's yours, or you've been given permission. Sorry, in case anyone. Just in case that got misunderstood, no pictures up the wall. Right. You're welcome to take pictures with your phones. Yes. We'll take <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. 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 So we're going to talk to Kevin Zeese here. He's the uh, co-director of uh, Popular Resistance. Popular Resistance has been one of three groups that have been the main force behind the Embassy Collective. Uh, there's also Code Pink and the Answer Coalition. Um, Kevin, can you just tell us about what's going on? United Black Alliance for Peace, and there's also many, many members of the Green Party here. So it's a coalition of a lot of different groups and people. More than 1,300 people have signed our declaration, which you can see on popularresistance.org. Shit's on the slider on top. What's going on today is we are preparing for the police to come in and tell us to leave. It will be an unlawful eviction and an unlawful arrest if they arrest us. Uh, and there's many reasons we're preparing for that. Uh, we expect a large opposition rally outside. Uh, Carlos Vecchio, the fake ambassador, will be out there. We don't know what he's going to do yet, but we are preparing for the worst. Uh, people are well prepared. Uh, we've discussed multiple times how to handle the situation. People have understand the risks that they are taking. We have lawyers lined up to handle uh, legal situations. Uh, we sent a letter today to the Secret Service uh, because of the, the way they have been siding with the opposition in our view and not protecting the embassy or protecting the embassy protectors. Uh, and so we saw our, our lawyer sent a letter to them to put that on the record and make it very clear uh, to authorities that they need to treat us with respect uh, and not abuse our rights. Mm -hmm. And it's your view that, uh, that we are lawful tenants here. Um, could I, could I just ask, uh, I've been here since Wednesday, um, but how, how long God, have you been? It seems been? longer. I know, right? <laughs> it seems long. Um, but how long have you been here, and, and what if, what is, what's been mostly occupying your time? Well, we've, we've started the collective April 10th. Uh, I've been here most of that time. I left a couple days, but yeah, I'm not sure exactly number of days. But uh, what's occupied our time has been uh, letting people know the truth about what's going on uh, in embassies what's going on with the uh, coup and the U.S. role in the coup. Uh, we've used this as an educational opportunity uh, because the issue really in this venue comes down to who's the government. We are here with the permission of the elected government. Uh, uh, and we've had permission from the vice foreign minister, well, the staff here, the vice foreign minister, the foreign minister, which is like the secretary said, even President Maduro 
has told us indirectly through the embassy staff that he, he supports what we're doing and will do anything he can to help us. Uh, so we have total clearly support to be here lawfully, and we are lawful tenants of this building. Uh, tenancy law applies. They can't just evict us without a process. Uh, and so that's how we see our, our lawful uh, situation. On the other hand, if the government comes in, the U.S. government comes in, they will be acting unlawfully. They'll be violating the Vienna Convention. It will be an unlawful entry. It will be a trespass. Under the Vienna Convention, embassies are inviolable. They cannot be violated. And uh, that would be a violation of the Vienna Convention. And if they evict us, they're not doing it with the right process. They're not following D.C. tenancy law, which provides us due process before any kind of eviction. And, the, and what's interesting about this is it really brings down to uh, uh, the issue. Who has the authority? Who is the government? The world thinks, except for those under U.S. thumb, the world thinks, the U.N. thinks, the Venezuelan people think, because they've elected uh, President Maduro legitimately, uh, they think that Maduro is the government. Uh, president Trump uh, and John Bolton and Elliot Abrams are saying that the president is uh, uh, Guaido, uh, Juan Guaido. He has virtually no support uh, in Venezuela. He ran for office from a very small state, got 24 percent of the vote second place in the National Assembly. That was enough to get into the Assembly, but he barely got into the Assembly from a tiny state. He was unknown. He was trained in the United States, went to George Washington University, was trained by, on neoliberal economics uh, by a former World Bank official. And so he is a, a tool of the United States. He's a, he's a U.S. puppet. And uh, so uh, what we see here really is a U.S. coup. Uh, Guaido is the U.S. front man. And he's been embracing the United States, which is why he's so unpopular. Uh, he's been embracing the United States when the U.S. does an economic war, embracing the United States when it attacks the electrical grid, embracing the United States by starting a, by being part of a terrorist plot uh, to uh, to create chaos. That was found out because his chief of staff and bodyguard were arrested, their computers and phones and homes searched, and evidence was found. The United States would spend a billion dollars of money they seized from Venezuela to pay for 10 uh, units of terrorists, 10 terrorist cells from Central American countries trained in Colombia uh, and, uh, as I said, funded by the United States to come in and create chaos, to attack the metro, to attack the cable, that go car that goes from downtown Caracas to the communities in the mountains, uh, to uh, attack government buildings, and even to assassinate government officials, including President Maduro. That is now all documented. Well, they're not reported in the United States. It's reported widely in Latin America. People are aware of this uh, in Latin America, but the U.S. media and the U.S. public has not been told this very important point. The reason the U.S. is doing it, by the way, is they, they can't even get their allies to agree to a military attack. So they have to create chaos in Venezuela so they can say, oh, we have to go in for humanitarian to protect the country. Of course, the U.S. will be causing the humanitarian crisis and then coming to save it by making a bigger humanitarian crisis, a crisis that will last probably for a generation because the Venezuelan people will not give up. The Venezuelan people are prepared to defend, to defend their, their, their independence. Uh, they have a military of 200,000. They have national police. Uh, they have uh, National Guard. And they have a civilian militia of, of more than 2 million people who are armed and trained. That's larger than the US military. And they have missiles to stop, uh, air defense missile uh, defense to prevent missile attacks. So the air attack will not work. And so you're talking about a mountainous, uh, jungle, uh, tree-filled area without air uh, attack, uh, because that will be stopped. They have very sophisticated weaponry to stop that. You have ground troops, civilian militia that will be everywhere, and military and National Guard and police. And you have U.S. Uh, allies, uh, allies of Venezuela, China, and Russia uh, telling us not to invade. Russia has sent 100 uh, uh, intelligence officers. Uh, with a general uh, to Venezuela. So this becomes a geopolitical fight. Uh, and so it would be a big mistake for the U.S. to go the, the terrorist route, to create humanitarian crisis, and then to go to war. It would be incredibly bad for the entire region. These wars spill over. And look how Iraq led to Libya, led to Syria, uh, and to Yemen. These are all, you start to create chaos in a region and it spreads and spreads. Oh, yeah. It would be a terrible thing yeah. for the Americas, well, let's, let's for the United States to go well. into Venezuela, which is six times as big Shredder? as Iraq. Yeah. So you're talking about a major undertaking well, against a, a, a country that is ready for, for the U.S., 
that does not want imperialism and is willing to fight for their independence. Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. Again, that's Kevin Zeese with Popular Resistance. So uh, listen, folks, I have to charge my phone to make sure that it's, uh, it's fully ready for this potential raid. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, please share this video, and please check out Mint Press News. Uh, we have a number of reports on this embassy collective, uh, on the protests, and uh, keep checking in for more updates throughout the day. We'll be, we'll be posting updates uh, should uh, a raid occur. Uh, again, I'm Alex Rubenstein reporting from Mint Press News. Thank you.